Well, welcome into the Tech Sags Rewind presented by Yeti. We're here at the Angry Elephant. Greg, Jasper in the house, you helped set this all up, my man. What was your favorite part of the show today? Man, it was just fun seeing everyone come out. We didn't know if there would be even one person in the audience. And I think at one point we had, you know, 30, 40 people here. So that was really neat. It was, it was fun. You came all the way from San Antonio. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name's Carlos. I came up to see the final countdown. First, see my son. Right. Number one. Number one. Aggies beat the hell out of Auburn. Two. Final countdown. Three. And then just have a great old weekend. And apparently, a lot of people were making fun of my tight jeans, but Olin had some shorts like in like 4K for everybody to see up close. Philip, what was your favorite part of the show, buddy? I was just getting to come by and see everybody. It's pretty cool experience just to see you up here doing your thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Phil's a good buddy of mine. All right. So on the show, we had uh, around Aguiland with Kay Nagley. Kay Nagley's dad is back out there, Steve Nagley, and her brother as well. The SEC Shorts crew, they were here. It was fun to talk to them. The Final Countdown, Stephen Seth McKinney, and Chris Budden from ESPN. All that and more here on The Rewind. Uh, yeah, let's get into some around Aguiland stuff. So Jimbo Fisher and co. will kick off uh, SEC play this weekend. That is an 11 a.m. kick versus Auburn. That will be on ESPN. Um, and then Aggie Volleyball and Aggie Soccer both beat Mississippi State this week. Uh, volleyball swept them to open SEC play, and then Soccer won just last night. They will both play Arkansas um, over the weekend. Volleyball will be on Sunday. That serve is set for 3 p.m. And then Soccer will take on the number 11 uh, Razorbacks. That is set for 6 p.m. So have a busy weekend ahead. Which fan base, like, how do they react? The, the, like an a and fan base, which I right. think sometimes we can be a little sensitive. How no, do we react? No, no, no. We've been good? Yeah, so you guys, uh, you guys in Tennessee, you're both very passionate about your teams, but you also have a good sense of humor when you're, you can take a joke when you've lost. So there are other teams out there, um, Auburn, Alabama, Florida. Really? That, that when you make fun of their teams, they're like, mm. We're not. We're not having it. <laughs> see, I'm. I was going to ask you about that because I'm fascinated by the dynamic because we see it on our site. They just wait and anticipate y'all's drop every week, even when we lose. So we've dealt. I've dealt with the psyche, uh, as everyone in here of the Aggie fan base for so long. Y'all are the only ones that can really make fun right. <laughs> where Aggies like, like they, oh, and they enjoy it and they have a great sense of humor about it. Mm -hmm. But I, it, it's always fascinated me because they literally sit there and wait until, until it drops after a loss. And they're like, we can't wait to see what they do. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I've never seen this. I would have thought we'd be the worst, but I, it doesn't yeah. surprise me. You say that because so, I've noticed since we've been here this week, we, you know, we met, a ton of people and i hear that a lot they're like even when we lose i can't wait to see what y'all do yeah and yeah i had no idea that we were the only people that were <laughs> okay we all are above it we're grateful for it though because yeah everyone's when we have we have way more fun in like a 2020 year like y'all do though it's way more mm -hmm. fun to do that than it's like you know when it's a subpar year like last year a little a little bit you know but uh we have more fun getting to celebrate than uh than poking fun but yeah it's all it's hopefully it's all done in a good fun spirit yeah yeah if you can remind our audience how it all kind of came together and then on wasn't it paul feinbaum who kind of like took oh, you paul, under his wing right paul, paul paul is the reason we exist yeah it's, which is weird to say but yeah he's a he's still a, a good friend of ours but yeah he's the sec network launched in 2014 and his show you know as you guys know when you're doing your radio show and you're simulcasting they're on for like five hours a day, you know, so you ha and with the video part of it, he wanted to show some unique content. So he put out the call for, hey, if anybody wants to shoot, shoot in some videos of you guys just talking about how you feel. And we decided to shoot like a little sketch and just shoot that in there and just see what would happen. And they really liked it. And so we started putting them in every week. And then it just kind of went from there. And all of a sudden, we created the YouTube channel as just a way to send the video to his physical producer. Okay. And all of a sudden, it's, it's very weird that that's like, that's the outlet now. So it's kind of weird how it's all transitioned out. Yeah. And and you guys were with the newspaper for a little bit, correct? Before oh, yeah. you decided yeah. so to So after that year on Feinbaum, we um uh AL.com offered to uh, you know, uh pay us to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. um we were doing we, for love yeah. of the game that first year. Yeah, yeah. 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 love of yeah. the game. Yeah, it's which is hard to do week in and week out where you're like, why are we doing this? We're doing this for free for Paul Feinbaum. Anyway? Oh, <laughs> um, but talk about just... another fun comment section. AL.com is uh, oh, bad. Uh, RIP, RIP those comment sections. That was woo. I want to see Edrin Cooper and Torian York. Maybe this be a little bit of a coming out party for Torian York because I think Auburn's going to run it and they're going to try to get 
you know, some quicker throws mixed in there. And uh, they're going to maybe test what Miami was able to do, which is hit things, uh, the crossers and things like that. And that's where I think those linebackers, between that and how much Auburn's going to try to establish a run game, particularly I think Auburn is is going to test out and see if A&M can, can set a good edge on defense or if they're going to be weak on the perimeter tackling. And so I think that's where they're going to try to hit the Aggies, and that's where those linebackers, both of those guys, are going to have opportunity to make a lot of plays and a lot of tackles. Yeah. You got one? Yeah, man. My, my player to watch <clears throat> is an offensive lineman. Shocking. Uh-huh. Usually Seth would do this. <laughs> I'd take all of them. <laughs> all line. Um, but I'm going to actually single out one guy. Okay. I'm going to call out my guy, Layden Robinson, War Daddy. Okay. Because this was where he had his coming out party about three years ago, I think. Maybe, was it? Maybe four. I can't remember. Maybe four. His red shirt freshman year in Auburn, where he gained the nickname. South Carolina. Was it South Carolina? But your point still stands. Point still stands. Thanks, Billy, for pointing that out. I did. I just did a uh, new. I mean, I, I, <laughs> do I do that? I didn't know. You got to be factual. Or that was here. a Come Gabe. On. Now it's a brawny thing. So, <laughs> now it's a luchy thing. But Nuno will do this when you say it. If you have I'll any flaws, you'll go. go. <laughs> you know what are you talking no. about? No, you know when I'm going to the Google. It's yep. quick. <laughs> I start paying attention. So now I'm like, don't correct me. I could be wrong, but you could get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I, I think this is this is going to be Layden Robinson's coming out party. Okay. This okay. this season. You know, I think he's played well at times, but I think this is the game where we need the offensive line in particular to really step up. I think their secondary is vulnerable, no question. And we have we have such a explosive passing game that 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 could be we where we make our hay but if auburn comes at us the same way miami did where they say we're going to take away the deep ball we're not going to let you guys beat us down the field with explosive plays we're going to force you to run the ball beat us with our front seven i think that's where the offensive line has to really step up this week if we can run the football effectively i'm talking four plus yards of carry we'll we'll beat auburn by two touchdowns i have no doubt i'm with you on that the the I've talked about the D-line and how they need to dominate a, a, a patchwork Auburn O-line. Auburn's had some issues up front. The Aggie offensive line, I don't think necessarily needs to dominate, but that is the position that I think we need to see the most improvement from the last time they played a, a power five. Yeah. I mean, the s- secondary, obviously, but I mean, to me, the O-line, they were all right at times against Miami, like you watch it. And a lot of times they were, they were outnumbered in the end, yeah. but this whole line needs to have a really good game. Yeah. Saturday. If the offense has a, a, a weak point, that would be it. So I agree. We, yeah. don't, need, we don't need just like a, okay. Performance. Right. We just like, kind of Miami, you know, Miami was okay. Like yeah. they didn't do bad, but they didn't do great. Yeah. You know, we need, we need a solidly good borderline, great performance. They need a confidence builder yeah. these next two weeks. They, they, and there's no, guys, Y'all know this, and I don't want to – there's no reason that these this group of five players, whoever they are, you know, Basantis practiced this week. I, You know, it'll depend if he if he goes or not, but he's practiced. Uh, if not, you got crown over. If not, you got fathery. Like, this offensive line should be better than the Auburn D-line, the Arkansas D-line. They should have good football games these next couple weeks, and they should – they should build a lot of confidence. It's not guaranteed. Who, who's been the guy, Seth? Or can we do that of, in the next segment? Yeah, and what I want to ask him is, my guy's Damani. By the way, I want to see him mm. wake up back. I know we're not talking about that right now, but he's got to he's got to be the guy that steps up this week in the defensive backfield because they got a pretty good tight end. Out of I guess he's probably the best. Yeah, they're leading receiver. I think isn't he? Yeah, yeah. they've got so. Chris, I, I can't believe I'm asking about weather in September being a, a factor, but do you think it plays a factor tomorrow since we are hearing it could be close to 100 degrees? And- yeah, I'm, I'm. first of all, I'm on like the bad luck train or like the climate change train here recently because we had the game uh, Utah-Baylor two weeks ago where the field read 156, and I can't believe it's almost October and we're still looking at feels like temperatures of 105. 
Listen, it does, but I mean, you know, you're, you play in Texas all the time. You're kind of used to it. When I had that game with Utah, I expected them to have massive issues with it and they were fine. I did ask Peyton Thorne about it yesterday, just being a kid from Chicago and always playing up North. And he says he loves playing in the heat, would rather play in the heat than the snow. So unless the humidity honestly becomes a big deal and it's, it's hard to keep your hands dry or anything like that. These guys are used to playing in this weather. They've been playing in it now for what feels like. I'm a Texan. I live up in Dallas. I feel like we've been sitting here in triple degree heat for six months now. All right. Last thing for you, Chris, what do you think this game will boil down to? How how does A&M or Auburn take it? Mm. I think for Auburn to take it, they got to get pressure up front. Uh, I don't know that they have enough pieces to be able to do that. They are beat up in the secondary. So if I'm a and I throw that thing all over the place. They're missing a lot of pieces on the back. I think for Auburn to have a chance in this thing, you continue doing what you did last uh, last week. Um, you use the run game with Peyton Thorne, but defensively, I think you got to get some pressure on Connor Wigman because what he completed 86% of his passes last week. And I know that's not saying much against the competition, but uh, get some pressure on him. So that he doesn't have some easy throws against a beat up secondary. All right, everybody, we're going to close it out here on tech Sags rewind. Let me ask the crew. I don't think they know. Let's find out. Do you know what to do at the end of a YouTube video? No, I didn't think you knew. You could. Godless. <laughs> no clue. No clue. Philip, what do you do at the end of a YouTube video? You probably tell everybody thanks for tuning in and hit the subscribe button. Yes. And what else? Uh, so like it, subscribe. And and then can we tell the people to comment? Anybody, please. Oh. And then comment below. Comment, comment below. below. Everybody's like, dude, I'm there too old go. to do all this <laughs> stuff. I'm good. We've got plenty of dude perfect in the house. Yeah. Well, and hey, just do that, and we'll see you next time on the rewind.